Jack, when you look at this game, it looks like you guys put a lot of emphasis on getting those stops and pushing the pace. What stood out to you guys' ability to disrupt their offense? Yeah, it was interesting. I thought you saw our guys look extremely fresh. I think that was the first thing. We had a lot of juice uh, to start the game and, and plenty to finish and to, to hold them to 45 points in the second half. Um, was pretty good by a group. And Ben told us out there on the court that it's the trust. You've been saying that, you know, game after game, but how have you seen it? How did you see it kind of grow even tonight? It, I, you know, Megan, really the what I'm love seeing is uh, you look at one of our huddles where we use uh, the iPad to see uh, what happened on the play before, and you have uh, the group talking to each other and trying to make adjustments at the same time. We, we didn't have that previously, and so that communication, whether it was a, a clip guys wanted to see at halftime that we can talk through. Uh, so I think that's where the, the trust is going, to be able to communicate, to be able to ask questions, uh, a little psychological safety, you know what I'm saying? where you can ask and, and not be reprimanded and, and try to figure this thing out together. Is there a reasoning why you've seen that improve over time? I think guys want to win. And that's what uh, happens when you're playing winning basketball. Uh, you're not thinking about yourself. You're thinking about the group and how the group can get better and how you can add to the group. Is that kind of exemplified by a guy like Kyrie who's done as much as he has and has accomplished as much as he had going airborne? in the fourth quarter with an 11-point lead? Without a doubt, Brian. And uh, we, we said that to him in the timeout. For him to uh, – and, and it was a previous rebound also where he ended up tapping one out and going over and, and just – sacrificing his body and just for the uh, for that play and so uh, you have guys like that uh, the leaders on your team being able to make plays um, and sacrifice their bodies it, it, it spreads so many times earlier in the season uh, we'd be up here and you you guys would shoot 50 percent and 40 percent from deep and free throw line but you'd give up like a dozen 15 14 more shots these last few games I mean you've actually had an advantage in attempts. Uh, how big is that to kind of allow the natural efficiency of the players that you have to come through? Yeah, you're spot on. It's, it's, it's huge. And uh, I think our guys hopefully are starting to realize um, that the equity they put in on rebounding the basketball will pay dividends. And um, uh, it's, it's extremely hard. We have to be a play more perfect, I guess, as a team when we give up, you know, 7, 10, 15 shots we've had before where uh, people have had 15 more shots than us. It's just hard to overcome, puts more stress on your defense, and uh, you have to be more perfect offensively. You went 11 deep early in that first half. I know you talked about it pregame, just about how much depth this team has, but what did you see tonight that, that made you want to do that? Yeah, it was great. Uh, I figured guys would have juice, um, but at the same time, uh, didn't want Kevin and Kai to play 38 minutes either. I think Kevin ends up playing 33 minutes. Uh, we're pretty spread across the board, uh, being able to utilize everybody. And, and the big part was... It puts a little bit, honestly, more pressure on the guy to perform, you know, because you do have someone behind you that can sub and come in and play hard and play efficiently and effectively. Uh, that happened early to Nick. Uh, quick, qu quick exchange. We had a couple of defensive breakdowns, and uh, we had someone to come in for him, and then he was able to come back in. So I like that it puts pressure on the guys to perform uh, and holds them accountable, but we have some depth, and we're going to use it. Jack, you mentioned the iPad during timeouts. How often do you use it? I'm sorry. How often do you use it? And maybe what was the formula you've come up with to make it beneficial for your squad? Yeah, it's interesting. You know, guys just, you know, obviously learn in different ways. And, uh, you know, sometimes you see it and the way you see it, my, my college coach used to say the OI in the sky don't lie. And uh, when they see it on the iPad, it's the truth. And so um, we'll actually huddle around, pull the clip, be able to visually see it, how we can get better from it, what actually happened, not what you thought happened, and um, not have hurtful or harmful feelings. We're just trying to figure it out, which is good. And then we all see what Kevin does offensively, but from the coach's standpoint, what are some of the subtle things that he does that makes you guys so much better offensively lately? Well, his ability to attract attention and uh, for him to still attract all that attention that at the end of the night, you look how efficient he is. And so um, his ability to garner double teams, 
to who get to the rim for us when we need to. Um, just overall being able to be, at the end of the night, an efficient player.